The plan to restructure Sapura Energy Burhad to put it back on the right footing was, on paper, well thought out. Unfortunately, it was poorly executed. The oil and gas services provider had been badly hit by the tumble in crude oil prices. A plan to reduce its debts and to raise working capital so it could continue to secure new contracts was then put on the table. However, the plan was never fully implemented. A major stakeholder would not or could not come up with the full sum it was expected to, while a new line of credit came with so many conditions attached that it was near impossible to utilize it. At a meeting with major shareholder Pramodalan National Burhat in early 2018, SEB proposed that key stakeholders inject 6 billion ringgit into the company to help it pare down its debts substantially, leaving some funds for working capital. PNB, however, proposed a ceiling of 4 billion ringgit in new injection. Following the May 9, 2018 general elections that saw Pakatan Harapan replace Barisan National in Putrajaya, there was a change in leadership at PNB. Former Bank Nagara Governor Zeti Akhtar Aziz replaced Abdul Wahid Omar as chairman at PNB. Nonetheless, the rescue plan was given the nod. But in the end, PNB injected only 2.7 billion ringgit. Sapura Group and SEB President and Group Chief Executive Officer Sharil Samsudin added another 532 million ringgit. And the SEB leadership team topped that up with an additional 16 million ringgit. Almost the entire sum was used to repay outstanding loans, in which PNB-owned Maybank was the largest beneficiary, leaving almost nothing for working capital. SEB also ended up paying the bank 75 million ringgit as underwriting fee for the rights issues. SEB then turned to the banks for a 2 billion ringgit loan as working capital, but eventually received only 1.2 billion ringgit. Even so, there were strict conditions attached to its drawdown, the facility could not be utilized in a timely manner and was suspended in October 2021. The COVID-19 pandemic only made things worse for SEB. It reported an 8.9 billion ringgit loss in the financial year ended January 31st, 2022, leading for calls for another rescue plan. Several setbacks also compounded to SEB's woes, among them the Yunlin Wind Farm project in Taiwan, and the Oil and Natural Gas Corporation Deep Water Development Project in India. With the company deep in trouble, former Prime Minister Najib Raza is leading the call for a bailout, a move which former Pandan MP Rafizi Ramli vehemently opposes. Critics have pointed to Malaysia's poor record of failed rescue plans for GLCs that include Malaysia Airlines, Perwaja Steel, the Renong Group and Felda. But in these cases, the focus was on cost reduction and the sale of assets, rather than growing the business holistically through a proper restructuring plan.